This video is about the self-winding clock company and their revolutionary electric motor that winds the clock's mainspring. Their goal was to eliminate the need to ever wind a clock by hand. Batteries had improved enough by the 1880s to spin an electric motor. In 1884, Chester Pond received a patent for an electromechanical clock. The clock had a small battery-powered electric motor adapted to a conventional clock mechanism. The motor successfully and reliably wound the mainspring, and the batteries would last at least one year. This is an image of Pond's rotary movement. This movement was used in all self-winding clock company clocks through 1898. With simple modifications, this same rotary movement could be made for 60, 72, 80, 84, 120, and 140 bead clocks. The self-winding clock company began selling clocks in 1886. Their clocks did not look much different than clocks made by Ansonia or Seth Thomas or E. Howard or many of the other clock makers. Conventional mechanical clocks are powered by a spring or a weight and the weight is regulated by adjusting the length of the pendulum. These movements must be rewound by hand. These are self-winding clock company clocks. The movement is powered by a spring and the rate is adjusted by regulating the pendulum. Nothing revolutionary yet. What makes a self-winding clock company clock revolutionary is the fact that the mainspring is automatically rewound by an electric motor. Batteries mounted inside the case provide 3 volts DC power to the motor. The motor automatically rewinds the mainspring after running one hour. Nobody needs to remember to wind the clocks, therefore the clocks can be placed anywhere. And notice that the dials do not have a hole for a winding key. The idea of a clock electrically rewinding itself was revolutionary. But how do you inform the public? The self-winding clock company chose to install an elaborate synchronized electric clock system at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. This will be the perfect place to publicize the clock that winds itself. The self-winding clock company pavilion had many types of their clocks, from elegant massive clocks to simple small clocks. Every clock was fitted with an electric motor to automatically rewind the mainspring. No winding by hand ever needed. This video shows a rotary self-winding clock company movement winding. After running one hour, a contact automatic closes, sending low voltage DC current from a battery to run the motor. The motor rewinds the mainspring one turn and then shuts off. This happens every hour, 24 times a day. These rotary motors are very quiet and rewind the mainspring in just a few seconds. This is the second generation self-winding clock company movement. It appeared in 1898 and is referred to as a style F or simply a vibrator movement. This workhorse movement was used exclusively until the 1960s when the company went out of business. The winding motor is incorporated between the plates and uses an up and down motion to wind the mainspring. Every 60 minutes the clock rewinds. The F motors are louder than the rotary motors and can take between 10 and 20 seconds to rewind. Today, two D-cell batteries uh, in series will run these clocks for at least one year. Many of these clocks and the following images were made by the self-winding clock company. The self-winding clock company was appropriately named. They developed clocks that did in fact wind themselves. Their common trait is they all had an electric motor to wind the mainspring. Many of these clocks were equipped with a synchronizer timed to the Naval Observatory and were part of the Western Union Time Service. Others were simply standalone timepieces. These interesting clocks have become very collectible and are included in many clock collections.